and welcome back to my channel. So it's just going to be um, a short and sweet video today where I'm just going to be talking you through uh, a recipe that I've done lately and just some other sort of highlights of my previous week. Uh, so first of all I just want to talk to you very briefly about um, an outing I did recently. Uh, last Thursday I made a trip to Arundel. Um, as I've talked about um, before, uh, Arundel is a place that I go to quite regularly. Um, I really like going to Arundel because it's a nice sort of, it's a very quiet, um, peaceful town where I often go to kind of get away from it all for a bit and have a sort of sense that I've been away um, and come back a bit more revived. So I went to Arundel last Thursday and I visited the traditional tea rooms again. That's, um, I've, I've been there once before when I had a tea cake. Um, which is very nice. This time I had um, I went for a scone um, with blackcurrant jam and butter. I had it as a takeout scone and um, it was a really nice scone. It was homemade. I could tell it was homemade. Quite a substantial scone and it was nice because they actually asked me how much blackcurrant jam I wanted and how much butter I wanted because I only wanted a little bit and that was nice of them because often when they butter it themselves they sometimes slather on way too much butter and it's just a bit too much because a little goes a long way. Um, so it was nice that a lady there asked me how much butter and how much jam I wanted, and she did it very, she did it very well. And also to take out tea, so I went, um, I went to the traditional tea rooms and got that. That took quite a lot of courage because uh, I do, I do struggle going to places, you know, getting used to new places like that. Mainly because I do have some OCD, like around hygiene and stuff, sort of contamination OCD, and I have this kind of fear about like, is the place clean? Will it make me ill? Like eating there and stuff. And if I haven't been there before, it's like a bit of an unknown. So if the place has got like a hygiene, a good hygiene rating here in the UK, um, which I think is really good, cafes and places like that have to show their hygiene rating on the door. So um, it goes from zero to five. If somewhere's got zero, that's like a case of serious concern and they'll probably be closed down. But um, five, it, for me, a, pl a place has to have a rating of five for me to feel really comfortable. If a rating's got like a four, I might still go there just to have tea or something, but I might be a bit hesitant about having something to eat there because I'll be like thinking, ooh, why haven't I got a five? Even though a four is still good, I'll, I'll be thinking, why haven't I got a five? So for me, I only really feel comfortable, particularly if it's somewhere I'm not familiar with, if it's got a five, um, because that means it's very good. I mean, obviously, this hygiene rating only reflects a particular day and time, and I know, logically, you know, it might have gone down or it could have gone up since then, but it's just some kind of, like, guide, and also I get a sense, I feel for the place by looking in, and I just get a, gen I just get a vibe as to how hygienic I think it is. This place looked pretty clean, it gave me good vibes, I could tell it was a clean place, the sort of place that would be well run, it just gave me good vibes, you know, <laughs> and it had a five. So, um... Yeah, it's not. It's a place that's very unlikely to have any hygiene problems. So, um, yeah, so I went there and I had a scone, and it was very, very nice. Um, and uh, it caused me a bit of anxiety, as I said, because I'm OCDs and stuff. There's always a little bit of doubt in my mind, saying, mm, "How can I trust them? Can I trust them?" Because whenever someone else is preparing food for me, like I have to, in a sense, hand over control to that person, and that always makes me feel a bit stressed. But um, I rose above my OCD, partly because food is my strong interest, which it helps having strong interests. Um, that's where autism, paradoxically, can actually be uh, have an advantage there, I guess, because it can help me overcome some of my OCDs, thanks to that very strong focus and interest in, in my case, food. So, as I say, so I, so I had that scone, and I went over to the bench where I sat before, it's a nice bench near the arcade, and I had it there in the tea. Didn't stay in Arundel too long because it's a very hot day. You know, some very, very hot sunshine lately. Too overpowering for me, if you ask me. It's very hot heat, and it's also particular. It's also very humid as well. And this heat wave has been going on and on and on. It seems for the last like couple of weeks, it's just been ex exceptionally hot, and it just doesn't. There doesn't seem to be any sign of it actually ending. And I know it will end at some point. It has to. Um, but it's just, it's very, rather, it's just too hot, the sunshine's too bright, it's very humid, so I've been sort of, um, probably indoors a bit more than outdoors, just because it has been so oppressive, and it's just nicer indoors at the moment, but I do try and get out and about still, because it's important, I need to get the vitamin D, you know, get vitamin D from sunlight, so I do try and get out, but kind of like pacing myself, but Arundel's a nice place anyway, because it's quite shady, and it seemed to be a little bit cooler than down where I live. So yeah, so I did that, and then with regards to, uh, oh yes, and also while I was in Arundel, just before I finish that one, I did go and visit a whole food store there, and I came away with these, um, with these, I haven't tried these yet, they're organic white mulberries, 
I've never tried them before, so I don't know what they're going to be like. Let me know if any of you have tried mulberries. I've, I'm not aware I've tried them before, so I got that thinking, hmm, I wonder what that'd be like. And I also came away with several bags of these cranberries. These are good ones. I don't often get cranberries, but these are um, dried cranberries, I mean. But these are good ones because they literally just contain cranberries, apple juice and sunflower oil. It doesn't contain any refined sugars or anything because it can be quite hard to find like dried cranberries and stuff that don't have refined sugar in them. So I was pretty pleased with those. And I'm going to use some of those to make a cake later on in the weekend. And if I do go ahead and make a cake, which I'm sincerely hoping I will do, I will let you know how that went. Okay. So now um, I'll briefly move on now and talk to you about a recipe I did recently. BBC Good Food. I'll be posting the link to this recipe in the comment in the um, um, yeah in the box below below the video. Um, it's broad bean and courgette salad. I made this last weekend, and it was really really nice. I do like courgettes. They're in season at the moment. Baby courgettes, and I also like um, broad beans. So this recipe contained baby courgettes, potted broad beans, olive um, olive oil. Walnut halves, vinegar, I use lemon juice though. Um, and what you do is you whisk the vinegar or lemon juice and olive oil together. You boil a pan of water, you add the broad beans and boil them for about two to three minutes. You drain and then plunge into iced water and cool before removing skins. You cut the baby courgettes into four to five pieces on the diagonal. And then you, um, and then you heat the olive oil in a frying pan over medium heat. You add the courgettes. You cook stirring 5 to 8 minutes, took me about 5 minutes, until a light golden colour. Then you add the broad beans, to so cook them for 30 seconds. Obviously you've already cooked the broad beans in boiling water, so you're just going to like heat them through again. Remove from heat and stir in the vinaigrette dressing while still warm. And then serve with a chopped walnut scattered over. It was really, really nice. And I had this with um, some bait, some potatoes. And um, also I had it with some tin sardines. And the tin sardines I had, which I really recommend if you can, if you can get these where you live, um, are these... Um, Luso, yeah, Luso Vita. Um, these one, these particular ones are with dried tomatoes. Uh, they also do ones in basil um, and a lemon one as well. I think my favourite ones are the ones in tomatoes. And they're really nice. The ones in tomatoes, um, they, they still have the skin on the sardines. And um, you could, and it's like, when it comes out of a tin, it actually looks like a sardine. Because often when you're getting tin sardines and stuff, it doesn't always look like a sardine. Because it's kind of been mashed up a bit and the skin's been removed. But he's actually, you wouldn't know if these came from a tin. Because they actually have their skin on them and they still have like all their bones and stuff. And, they, and they're really substantial. You know, they haven't been filleted or anything. And they're really, really nice. So if you can get these where you live. Luso, Vita, sardines and olive oil. I, as I said, I particularly recommend those ones. But you can get different flavours. I highly recommend. They're really very, very nice. So I had that with this salad and it went really, really well. I actually had it on two nights. And, um, yeah, I do I do really like baby courgettes that have been fried. I think they're very nice and I do particularly like broad beans. Uh, I think broad beans are my favourite um, green bean. Um, I am trying hard to get to, like, um, um, English green beans, um, the sort of thin, long beans. Um, it's a work in progress. Um, I, I don't particularly like runner beans. I find them really stringy and they can be a little bit hard to cook because it can be hard to get them tender enough without overcooking them. Um, and, you, and I prefer the, um, the fine green beans because they're a bit thinner and a bit easier to cook but I'm still kind of not sure about them. So I'm trying to like eat them more often just to try and develop a taste for them because I'm, I'm a bit funny like this. If I don't like a food, I think, why don't I like it? And if it's a food that I feel I should like, particularly if it's one that's, like, really healthy, it annoys me I don't quite like it yet, and then I'm like, I need to like this food. Um, so I, I know it's a bit perverse like that, because I know I've been, mm, I don't really like it, I'm not going to bother with that one. But no, for me, I feel, why I need to like this food. I sort of see it as, like, a challenge. So um, I am trying to like them. Do you like green beans? What do you think about green beans? Let me know. Um... So yes, so I am make, I'm going to be making a green bean salad tonight. I might, I'll let you know maybe how that went in a, in a future video because I haven't done that one yet. Also today, in terms of food news, um, my support worker um, is leave. It was her last day today with me, so we had a kind of um, leaving kind of um, little visit to a cafe, not a cafe, to M and S to get some cake, and I got a um, uh, I got a raspberry, a spelt raspberry muffin which is a muffin with almonds on top and a bit of um, um, a raspberry jam inside, which is really nice. And um, I think she had, what did she have? Oh, yeah, she had a, um, a red velvet muffin, which had icing on it. And then, so we got those and we came back to where I am and we had that with tea. And uh, that was really, very nice. I don't often have muffins. Um, 
It's also my um, my birthday later on this week. Oh my god, on Friday. Um, I'll let you know how that went next week. I don't particularly um, like birthdays these days. Um, I find I kind of find them a lot of pressure, particularly like I'm going to be 31. It's like what? Because I do not look 31. People, if I tell people that's my age, I know they're going to drop their jaws because I look about. I could pass for like about 19, 20. Maybe even younger than that sometimes, so, and I don't feel that age, so yeah, and I don't like getting older, because I feel like I'm saying goodbye to my youth, and um, I'm at that age now where I actually hate birthdays, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not really looking forward to that very much, but I'm going to make myself a cake, I'm not, I'm, I told my dad, look, I don't want a cake or anything, I don't really want any celebrations or anything, um, I'm making my own cake, so I'll see how that goes, um, that's what I'm using those cranberries for, so I'll let you know how that goes. Um, so yeah, and I also thought, you know, treating myself to a muffin, it was rather nice, but my sport worker's leaving, so it's part of that, and also because it's my birthday coming up, so I just thought I'll get myself a muffin, because I don't often buy muffins, um, from shops and that, so it's really, really nice, and yeah, it's a bit sad saying my, saying goodbye to my support worker, because we've known each other for like 10 years, but she said we can keep in touch, so I might see her again around Christmas, you know, just for a little chat and a little, um, you know, because we are going to keep in touch, you know, maybe meet up occasionally, you know, because she still will be round this way where I live, so we might go and meet up at a cafe and, you know, just for cake and tea and things like that and, and just to, you know, because it would be a shame to completely, like, not see each other again because she has supported me for, like, basically 10 years, which is a really, really long time and helped me through a lot, so we will, so it's nice that, you know, it's nice it's not going to be, like, a complete departure that we will stay in each other's lives a little bit which is nice so but it it still was rather sad to say goodbye um but yeah I'll be getting a new support worker um and and we'll see how that goes a little bit apprehensive about that um because it takes me a little while to get to know someone and to really bond with them so we'll see how that one goes but hopefully it'll be okay in other news I'm also going to be taking part in a research study um, testing out a new therapy um, for people with autism um, it, it's uh, and I actually get paid for it which is good so not only do I do I get to take to have a therapy um, over three weeks but I also get paid for it um, I'm, I'm hopefully gonna have my first appointment next week so I'm really quite excited about that so of course um, in my next videos I will probably be talking in some of my next videos I probably will be talking a bit about how that went um, so hopefully it'll go well, and like I say, I'm getting paid for it, so that's pretty amazing. That's why it's kind of, Do any of you ever take part in research studies? Let me know if you do. Anyhow, so that comes to an end this video for now. As I say, it's just meant to be a short, brief update. Um, I will be doing a book review very soon, because I have been reading... Lately, the book I've been reading is called Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison, which is a book about race relations in the United States, um, in America, um, sort of before the Civil Rights era. It was quite a lengthy, big book, but I plan on doing a book review about that next week because I still need to write down some notes. If I, if not, it, I can't guarantee it will be next week, so I don't want to say, I don't want to guarantee it because, you know, if I guarantee it and then I can't do it, you might be disappointed. But I'm hoping I'll do it next week, and if I don't do it next week, it'll be a falling week. Okay, so um, that ends my video now. We'll, I will end up now, end now. Um, so let me know what you thought of this video and if you've got any ideas for future videos and um, yeah any comments are, are welcomed in the box below because I, I do read all comments and I do try and um, respond to them if I can. So thank you for watching.